Welcome to the Naya's Gallery at the Paint Spot. We are a retail store run by artists and our gallery features local artists to inspire other artists. We value that art is not always pretty or commercial in nature and our space has room for the unexpected. Hi Jennifer. Um, so today we're with um, Jennifer Ray Forsyth and she's going to be talking about her show Bubblegum that we just recently put up. Hi, um, I am a painter. Um, and I use painting and mixed media as my medium. Um, um, the work I'm presenting, um, I consider to be painting. Um, I like to use elements of collage and found objects as, as part of the, the layering of the paint. Tell us about the, the portraits on floppy disks. Okay, so these pieces are older works, um, and um, Kim had reached out to me because um, she was interested in exhibiting them, and I really wanted to show some of my newer work that kind of reflected um, the era I've captured here. So these are from a body of work I did over several years called the Snapshot Collection of the Artist. And in this body of work, I looked at my own personal snapshot collections, photographs mostly that I had taken or had been given to me. And I painted them very quickly um, with almost no faces um, or removing the faces so that they were as ambiguous as possible to, to capture a mood that the original photographs had. They were meant to evoke memory um, and to elicit that response in a viewer, not just of my own memory, but of sort of a universal memory. Um, and growing up in the 70s and 80s, um, the Polaroid was quite a popular photographic medium. So I captured the, the paintings on floppy disks to represent time so they captured a moment in time. Both the floppy disk and the Polaroid had that, um, that element to them. And then bouncing off of this work, I have included other works that um, are really about the innocence and play of childhood and kind of fun and irreverence, but with a little bit of tragedy, I guess. Um, so, you know, the lost balloon or um, the sailboats and um, something like that, that rifle. Um, I grew up on a sailboat, so a lot of my early years I spent being um, afraid of the water and afraid of sailing, but also completely captivated by it. Um, I've incorporated a lot of um, pop culture elements from um, candy and um, comic books or magazines that really speak to that time frame. So do you have a large collection of images that you've saved over time to create your work? Yes, I, I go to secondhand stores and um, collect magazines and books and I tear out images. Um, I have bins of different materials and I've sorted them by some by type, some by um, project. Um, I do a number of different projects at the same time, so I'm always pulling from one thing or another, um, but keeping them fairly loose. Sometimes I will um, collect all of my materials that I feel like I'm in the mood for, and I'll put them in a box and I'll take them with me. I do a lot of work while I'm traveling, so I use a little, I have a little um, moleskin expanding um, file folder that's quite small that I stick little tiny pieces in and so I'll, I'll be piecing things together wherever. Collage has a long history using pop culture and imagery. Um, what is the visual narrative that you're trying to convey with your work? Um, and when you're creating your images what usually happens first? Do you do the drawing or collage or painting? or? Just kind of... I work pretty intuitively and I work fairly fast. So I don't tend to draw things when I make them. Um, I have bodies of work where, where I spend my time drawing and then work into those drawings. But for my painting and collage, I kind of just 
throw it all together and um, move it around and then layer up. Um, sometimes in some of the works on canvas, for instance, there'll be layers and layers of, of work built up underneath and they change so much as I work on them. Um, and sometimes I will do a collage and paint back into it and then I will photocopy it and then reinsert it back into one of my paintings and then paint back into it again. I try to sandwich all of these things between layers of medium so that it really um, encapsulates it. Because a lot of the materials I use are um, not necessarily archival. I try to seal them in with a, a good medium so that they kind of float in there. And then paint back into the surface because I know that these materials are going to fade over time. So I really want to get that punch of color back in. Um, and then adding a lot of really bright colors that I have to layer up and layer up and layer up. Do you have any favorite pieces in the show that stand out for you? Um, so I think probably the roller skating girl over there is one of my favorites. Um, I love to roller skate. It was one of my big hobbies when I was a child. Um, I also, I really like that crazy. So that crazy, it, uh, it has a comic piece here. It says, hey man, that crazy went home. Um, and it's kind of embedded in there, so I pulled that out. Um, and this piece is really, um, it's part of a, a, a number of works that I've done over the years have these inverted sailboats. Um, and that really speaks to the years I spent on a sailboat as a child and that idea of like fear. Um, and also they started coming out more in my work when I moved to Alberta because I was so far away from the water, which is really home for me. So they're, they're like kind of this like tragic piece for me, but they've, <laughs> they've become embedded in a lot of my works. So sometimes they're really obvious and other times like this, you kind of would have to pull them out or see them. Um, so they, they become very personal for me. A lot of your imagery has a nostalgic feel. Is this intentional? Yes, this is definitely intentional. And, and I think something that um, I plan in a lot of my work, um, the pieces here, what I tend to do is I'll tend to pull out pieces that I want to put together and make little piles. Mm -hmm. So I might, um, I might have sort of a, a theme that I'm working on or something that um, is my overriding kind of impetus for the work. And then I'll kind of pull pieces together that I think go and make little piles for the collage. And then, then I start just playing with them and they'll move from one collage to another. Um, but like in, in this instance, I would specifically look at elements that are the same. So I've got you know the, the telephone poles, which are reoccurring in my work and the like, buildings or industrial pieces. And then the, the like elements of play or, or childhood. So I'm pulling out the, the strips of nostalgia and sometimes, sometimes I'll put them together and then I'll tear them apart and then put them back together again. Um, but definitely playing on, I knew that I wanted to have this idea of the, the gun being an element of play, being something that was, was of the past, but also playing with the, the colors of the buildings. And for me, these buildings are buildings in Vancouver that are all kind of have this weird pinky color. Um, and then just kind of bringing the flowers in to create this, this tension between the, the gun and, and the um, kind of more beautiful pieces. I kind of like that play. For a number of years, I had been really focused on elements of graffiti and damage and decay in the urban environment. And a lot of that sort of keeps reappearing in my work. Um, and then when I was working on that, I started really looking at um, roadside memorials and, and the flowers that were combined in that. And 
um, bringing some of those into my work. So a lot of my work will have images of flowers. Some work actually has um, flowers uh, attached to the surface. So there'll be artificial flowers and then I paint back into them. So really layering up the, the objects. And, and when I started working with flowers, um, artificial flowers, I really started talking more about how they became part of the painting, how they became part of the paint. Um, and then like in pieces like this where I have, you have to look fairly close, but there are little um, plastic gems that pop out and then in certain lights they will glow, but they're in there um, as well as um, different bits of candy wrapper in here. So there's a tin foil that is a kind of a purple color and then purple gems that pop out and then just adding some of the um, the sparkles into the paint um, to kind of pull all of that out together. In some of these works you see that there's flowers pop popping up in, inside the works um, and a lot of my newer pieces are based on flowers. So I've been doing a lot of um, research around flowers and what their their meanings are. Okay, Jennifer's show runs until uh, Tuesday, October 26th, so it's up for at least a month now. Um, so we're hoping that everyone can stop by and check out the show in person.